This week on Maker Monday, join us as we recognize the creators of Java Bean Cafe and Roastery and learn just how they go from having green coffee beans to a delicious cup of coffee. Hi there, I'm Derek and this is my wife Carrie and we own the Java Bean Cafe here in Decatur. We opened in 2008, however uh, through some challenges we decided to sell in 2012 and uh, through some great fortune we bought it back in 2015. So we've been rolling ever since, we made some great changes and some additions. Um, we've, we've added a roaster, we've added more employees, and uh, we're doing really well. And we are very, very happy that we can be a part of this community and employ multiple people. And uh, we're, we're contributing to our community and our schools, and we're just we're thankful to be a part of that. And uh, we, we are, are makers, makers of our, our community. community. Welcome to the Java Bean Roastery, established in 2018. Here you will see the first steps involved in making a green coffee bean into a drinkable cup of coffee. An interesting fact, what many people don't realize is that coffee beans are not actually beans. Instead, they are seeds from the coffee cherry. Typically, Derek and Carrie will order their green coffee beans in 30 to 40 pound bags at a time. What you are seeing here first is the Brazil Reserve, which they use for their espresso roast. What many people don't realize is that espresso isn't a type of bean, but rather a brew method. Typically, roasters will roast the bean they use for espresso slightly darker at 427 degrees for 14 to 15 minutes. The second bean you are seeing is the Costa Rican bean, which they use to produce their house blend of coffee. This bean is usually roasted for approximately 10 minutes and 30 seconds at a temperature of 415 to 417 degrees. change the unit so I know what I'm looking at because I go by grams um, and there's a kilogram so what we'll do is we'll take the one kilogram of green beans we're going to put it into here and we will drop that at 400 degrees so now we wait the gas to the roasters off and we will uh, let this get to 400 and then we'll <clears throat> drop those. It's called drop because it drops into the, the, bear, the drum. And this is, acts just like a dryer. So your dryer at home just rotates, it's the same concept. It's got fins in there, it does the same kind of thing. So now we're at 401, we'll get to 400 and we will drop. And we start our timer. And so right now, the timer's been started, but the gas is off, okay? So what happens is the beans are rotating, and we're just kind of letting them like, soak a little bit, right? Once the Honduras beans are dropped down into the roaster, Derek explains that you can turn your gas and your fan up and down to help ensure that your temperature to roasting time ratio is correct. For example, by about the five minute and 30 second point in the roast, the temperature should be approximately 300 degrees. Derek also explains that the further you get into a roast, the more change can happen to the beans in a shorter amount of time. So it is important to remain as consistent as possible with your ratio. The sweet spot for roasting is after the first crack, which you will hear in the next clip. But before the beans begin to crack for a second time, if you try and roast too fast, you will explode the bean out. The first cracks can typically be heard right around the 8 minute and 30 second point at a temperature of 385 to 390 degrees. There, there it goes. It'll be like popcorn. Hear that? And, and now this can be drank right now. So this is drinkable. We're at that point of like, hey, this is good. So now we're at 402, we're, we're pretty close. So we're at 10 minutes and 30 seconds, we're gonna drop. So what's more important than time is temp, right? So we want temp to be 415. So we're gonna turn on those dudes and it'll come out of there. Yeah, if I ignore the 
time, once I get to my temperature at it, where I know it has to be, I, time's irrelevant. Just, you can't move your temperature. So it's like, hey, this is it. But I'm super close. So I'm at about four, if I had three degrees, I'm at 415 and 424, I'm pretty close. So I'm gonna drop it right now. And there's your coffee. Once the beans have dropped into the cooling pan, there are actually fans that draw air through the beans to immediately stop the cooking process. Derek explains that the roasting methods for beans is truly incredible and just how customizable it is to create flavor profiles by slightly tweaking your roasting methods, but also your brewing methods after the beans are roasted. Java Bean Cafe goes through about 12 pounds of espresso beans a week, which equates to approximately six roasting cycles a week to keep up with their demand. Now that we have learned a bit more about how Carrie and Derek roast their beans, it's time to learn how they are transformed into the beverage we know and love with a wide variety of syrups and customization options. But first, take a moment to appreciate the warm and inviting environment that the Vreeblix have created for their customers to enjoy while they eat and drink. Their loyalty mugs for people to leave their own mugs and receive a discount on their coffee is especially awesome. Here you can see Tanya making one of Java Bean's most ordered specialties, the Pink Flamingo. This drink is made with the espresso beans prepared in their very own roastery that you saw earlier in the video, and then combined with chocolate, vanilla, and raspberry syrup along with steamed milk to make a delicious mocha. While you are enjoying your beverages and food, make sure to take a moment to appreciate the wide variety of decor around the java bean that makes it such a warm and inviting space to relax and enjoy time while in the cafe with friends and family. I think it's great that we're, we're makers in our community because uh, I think we make, we help make relationships better. Uh, one of the reasons why we opened the, the java bean cafe was to to help relationships, uh, time, a place for people to gather and meet and, and build those relationships. And we can make that happen. And one of the things we like about the roaster, that I like about the roaster, is being able to, to help people enjoy their coffee better, uh, a better experience, and, and make a better cup of coffee. And I think by doing that, we've done a really good job of, of explaining the process, and, and, and I think that We've contributed to that in the community to, to open people's eyes to what great coffee can be and, and how they can use it. So I think that 
to, for us to be makers in our community, it really does a lot from in a large scale of relationships to, to product, to, to a meeting place, to, to music, to all kinds of things, and we're just happy to be a part of that.